Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is one of the toughest games you'll ever play, and you'll die over and over and over again. But there are certain things you can do to improve your chances of survival and make the early stages of the game less frustrating. Here are 11 tips to help you if you're just starting out. Hold block while learning enemy attack patterns. Instead of going for deflections the first time you meet a particular enemy, try holding L1 or LB to block instead. It will absorb almost every attack in the game, except for unblockable attacks which are accompanied by a red symbol on screen. But be careful, because blocking too many attacks in a row will damage your own posture, so keep an eye on the bar at the bottom of your screen. If it's getting dangerously full, switch to dodging. Take the high ground and plan your route. Stealth is paramount in Sekiro. Most areas are filled with groups of enemies and it's unwise to face them all head on. Thankfully, the game offers you plenty of ways to take them out from the shadows one at a time. Get to the highest possible ground to work out the best route through any zone. Sekiro's grappling hook will lock on to any nearby jump locations so you can always see where the best nearby vantage point is. Get up there and scout out your surroundings, looking for enemy patrol patterns and lines of sight. Stealth kills work on most mini-bosses. Some of Sekiro's mini-bosses are as tricky as the big bads, and most will take two death blows to finish off, but for some of them, one of those can be a stealth attack before the battle even starts. When you know the location of a mini-boss, see if there's a way to sneak up on them from behind or above. It's not possible for all of them, but it is worth the time to find out. Doing this will half their health before you face them and make the task much less daunting. Practice combat with Hanbi the Undying. New combat techniques come at you fast at the start of Sekiro, and Hanbi the Undying, located next to the dilapidated temple, is a perfect test dummy. As his name suggests, he can't die, and his skill with a sword means he can help you test new techniques without consequence. If you're struggling to counter one particular move, those unblockable attacks we mentioned earlier for example, check in with him and practice until you've got the timing down. Master your own moveset. Sekiro's moveset isn't limited to a simple forward slash. Before you take on bosses, make sure you're fully clued up on the rhythm of your strikes. You should know exactly how it feels to perform three strikes in succession, as well as exactly how far you'll lunge forward when you hold down the attack button. The same is true for attacks you pick up via the various skill trees. Return to Hanbei the Undying to get to grips with it. That way, you'll know when it will work and when it will just get you into trouble. Invest in coin purses. When you die in Sekiro, you usually lose half of the money that you're carrying, but you can prevent this by buying coin purses with your spare cash. These purses protect your money, and then when you need to spend it, you can open them up and retrieve the currency inside. They cost more than the value of the coins they contain. A purse holding 100 sen costs 110 to buy, but trust us, you'll die more than enough to get your money's worth. You can buy prayer beads and gourd seeds from merchants. Prayer beads and gourd seeds are some of Sekiro's most important items. You can hand in four beads at the sculpture's idol to gain both vitality and posture, while giving a seed to NPC Emma next you an extra refill of your healing gourd flask. Both will make fights a lot easier and help you survive longer between rests. The merchant in Ashina outskirts, next to the battlefield where you fight the horseback boss, will sell you gourd seeds, while you can buy prayer beads from the merchant next to the abandoned dungeon entrance. Organise your quick items during downtime. There's nothing worse than dying because you were fumbling with the d-pad trying to select the right slot for your quick items. To avoid that trap, make sure you only equip items you really need, and don't worry if you leave some of the five slots empty. You can pause at any time during combat, so if you need to use other items, you can do that direct from your inventory. Keep a note of side boss locations. After you defeat the Blazing Bull mini-boss, the world will open up considerably, and you'll have four or five paths to choose from, each ending in a powerful enemy. This tip is to simply remind you to make a note of each of their locations so you don't forget later. Some of them are optional, so if you forget to come back, you won't have a chance to grab their powerful loot. 
<laughs> Read every note and eavesdrop for hints. Some of the best items in Sekiro, including new attachments for your shinobi prosthetic, require you to poke around off the main path. To avoid aimless wandering, look out for clues on your travels. You can eavesdrop on enemies for intel, and some will reveal the locations of new prosthetics or tips about taking on the next boss. You'll also find notes littered around the world that hint at key locations. Read them thoroughly, because some of them are fairly cryptic, but they all contain leads worth following. The same goes for your own conversations with NPCs, who will often tell you where to look for key items. Don't hoard consumables, especially my boo balloons. If you're exploring diligently, you'll soon have an inventory bursting with items. Don't let these items go to waste, particularly the my boo balloons which can either help you find even more items or more money for a limited time. They do no good simply sitting in your inventory, so pop them whenever you get the chance and you'll soon find some replacements. The same goes for candies that enhance your combat abilities. If you feel like you're having trouble with a fight, then chow on down. So those are 11 tips to help you get started in Sekiro. If you've got any more, let us know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.